Welcome again to another edition of Bible Alive. I'm Rudy Hall, president of Remnant Publications, and we have a special guest this morning with Supra Morrissey. Morrissey. And I'd like you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Number one, um, where do you work? As uh, Rudy has said, I'm Supra Morrissey from Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division. Our offices are based in South Africa. We have 23 countries in the division, nine unions, and one attached field. Well, good. How did you get started in this work? I started off as a, a literature evangelist, I should say a student literature evangelist, way back in 1989. So you was a literature evangelist. Yes. And then where did that lead to? That then led to me joining the, the ministry. In, in fact, as a student literature evangelist, I was a student because I was studying as an industrial maintenance apprentice. I started off to be an electrician. I wanted to, uh, to be an electrician as a career in life. But as I went on, I came across the conflict series set. I was an Adventist. I was going to church. But I wasn't so convinced that I should be a minister. But after going through that set, I decided to be a pastor. But I started off as a literature evangelist, and then I moved on. I think three months down the line, then the church called me into the pastoral ministry before I even went for training. Before you even had your training, you yes. was called to be a pastor. Yes. And then um, how long did you pastor? I pastored for one year. The Lord was so good to me. I was meant to pastor for four years. But then we had some people coming over from America to Africa, and I happened to be translating for them. They were led by, by Dwayne McKee. It was a team of professionals, about 50 people, and there were three uh, doctors uh, among them that were doing some other ministries as he was preaching in the evening. Yes. And then they decided that they wanted to sponsor me to go to school. I never even thought about it because we had a long queue of people who still had to go to school ahead of me. But by God's grace, they did sponsor me, signed a check before I even got admission at school. Well, and then I took a, che a check there, and then I said to this guy, I'll send in the forms, application forms. So I sent the application forms. So in other words, God paid for me before I even started uh, schooling. So God had it all planned out before you exactly. even started. Exactly, that's true. So you went from electrician yes. to literature evangelist, literature evangelist to, pastor. to pastor. And then what was the next step? And then I came back after that. I became a, a, pub, a, 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 a youth director in the North Botswana Conference. Originally, I come from Botswana. I forgot to mention that. Yes. That's my home country. From Botswana. Botswana is a small country, a big country, of course, but with a small population of 1.8 million people in the country. In fact, in that country, we have more cattle than people. Oh, really? <laughs> more cattle than people? Yeah. So I started off then as a youth director uh, for three years. And after those three years, then I went on to the union. Botswana didn't have a union at that time. So a union was formed, then I became a publishing director for the union for two years. And after two, those two years, in 2006, I started at the division now as a publishing director for the division. Well, it sounds like he was on a rapid pace from electrician to literature evangelist to pastor. Now, are you, is this the average age for somebody in your position here? No, not at all. I'm actually equally shocked myself yeah. that it was quite a fast move. And at my age, probably I'm among the youngest. You're the uh, youngest the division. Uh, publisher yes. director yes. of the division. Yes. And also, I just wanted to bring our attention to this Bible. Have you ever seen this before? Oh, yes. Is this the only country you've seen this in? No, no, no. This is so familiar in Africa. Um, we received quite a number of these Bibles, and they've been a great blessing to us in Africa. In most of the countries, we had the follow the Bible program by, the, by the, the general conference, where each and every country around the world had to promote Bible reading and Bible study. And at each of all those sessions and events where we were doing this program, follow the Bible, we were handing out Bibles. And most of the Bibles that we handed out were these very Bibles printed by remnant publications. You know, when I talk about these Bibles, uh, not on a bragging note, but we've got probably a million of these Bibles mm -hmm. in Africa. Yeah. And a million sounds like a large number. Exactly. But the more we're involved, that's not even really a drop in the bucket. Sure. Now, in South Africa, you're from the South Indian Ocean. Yeah, Southern Africa Indian Ocean Devotion. Division. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's places like Mozambique. Yes. And is that a fairly well-to-do area? 
Not, not at all. It's not, it's not a well-to-do country. They are struggling economically. As you know, they have just come out of the war, and now they have a language a challenge. We have, a, in fact, in the division, we have three official languages. It's French, Portuguese, and English. So you find that the Bibles are printed in English. So for us to reach the masses in Mozambique, we really need to print them in the local language, which is Portuguese. And they don't have you know, the economy to be buying Bibles for themselves. So a lot of people really don't even know the Bible, let alone reading it. Uh, a short time ago, we, we understood that here at Remnant. Yeah. And we have a process. Um, we're trying to get these done in the Portuguese language That's to get great. containers. And a lot of people wow. don't know what a container is. Yes. But that it represents probably 40,000 Bibles per container mm -hmm. to go into those areas. Yes. Do you have any uh, stories, personal stories that you can tell us about people that you have heard that have picked up this literature, I, picked up this Bible? I personally have shared, I think, more than 10 of these Bibles to people who actually came up and asked. I didn't even go out myself on a mission to share them. I have this culture of carrying literature in my car all the time. And when these Bibles came, I took them also into my car. And most of the times people will say, I need a Bible, so I'll give it out. Even recently, before I came here to the United States, I had somebody asking for a Bible, a security guard at a, an estate where we live. And I didn't have one that particular day. So they are really on demand. I can say that right now as I speak to you, in my office I don't have any. And people still need them out there. Well, this morning you were sharing um, just several stories. You had worship with us here at Remnant Publications. Yes. Yes. And it was just so interesting to me. And that the people are just so hungry. Uh, I, I talked to uh, Gilberto, a yes. friend of yours, yes. um, that, that's a vice president exactly. over there in, in SID, or South Indian Ocean yeah. Division, yeah. Uh, South Africa Indian Ocean Division. And he was telling me that there may be 20 or 30 people studying all from the same Bible. Mm -hmm. so here in the United States, we have you know, lots of Bibles. Uh, many times don't even use them, but that's not the case, is it, yeah. uh, over there in... Probably I can share a story that I didn't share this morning. Well, share one. Allow me to share it. It's from the beautiful country of Zambia. The conference in Zambia challenged the members to go out and do a campaign in an unentered area. And the people were illiterate also in that place, in that uh, at, um, a village. So one literature evangelist stood up and said, I will go, a lady, which is a very rare thing to happen for a lady to go out and do a campaign. So this lady went out and started a campaign, and by God's grace, to cut the long story short, she baptized 60 souls in that particular souls. place. And then she left, hoping that I have done the Lord's work, the Lord has been so good to me. But a few weeks later, she got a call from the same village. They said, you know, we enjoyed the stories you read from that book. They didn't even know that it is called the Bible. Wow. We enjoyed the stories you read from that book. Can you come back again, please, and teach us how to read and write from that particular book, the black book that you were reading from? And so the lady went back and now started some classes teaching these people, I mean, in tens, in their tens, in their, their 20s, they were sitting together to learn from the Bible how to read and write, and at the same time, learning that their salvation here, Jesus died for them. And that was quite interesting. When the government of the country heard about that, they took over and started a school, but it was all pioneered by a literature evangelist who started a campaign reading from the Word of God. So it was just one lady just starting, studied herself, went out there and just shared what she knew. Exactly. And from there, you said 60. Yes, 60 so, was And then time. from there, went back again, yes. and then a whole the government got the government. involved. Yes. Now, in some areas you hear where the government don't even allow exactly. the Bibles in. Yeah. How is that in your division? How does the government, do, do they work hand in hand? The government's in the division because of the challenges we are facing today that are overwhelming even the governors today. They really feel they need prayer, they need God to be close to them and work with them. Though the government does not necessarily follow the system of uh, you know, the Seventh-day Adventist church in di different areas, but one good thing is that the LE pioneered the work there, and we also have time to pray and thank God all the time before classes start in, in many areas of the country, well, I mean of the division. Well, that's very encouraging because so many times you hear 
for the government is a problem, but that's not the yeah, case sure. um, in your division. Yes. So what's the next step for you? You've come all these steps, um, all the way up to, there's not too many places to go, but heaven is there. <laughs> yes, no, that's true. I don't think I have any other I mean, uh, you went from, from electrician yeah. all the way up to... Uh, publishing director of the division, yeah. And I had the privilege of stepping into the general conference office. And I was talking to a friend and I said, brother, we are at the second highest office of the church on this planet because the first one in heaven. So if we have made it through all these other offices, we must by all means make it Amen. to heaven where God is and the director of everything and the president of the entire planet resides. We must be there and be at the feet of Jesus. Well, from, from the president here at Remnant to hear these stories, because we work very hard here to get these published, to get them out, to ship them, to come over all these hurdles. Yes. But it's so encouraging to hear how they're actually being handled and the people are getting a benefit. Souls are being won to Christ. Yes. And it's just so important to me how that is. I know we're going to have to take a short break sure. here in just a few seconds, but I just want to tell you that this is so encouraging to see how these Bibles are being used and the people are so hungry for them. Thank you. It's a prompt, pleasing pleasure for me too Amen. to share the stories with you. Well, thank you very much. We're going to take a short break, but we'll be right back. Food, one of the most essential elements for life, providing nourishment, energy, and even enjoyment. But what if there was no food? Water, the most important element to life on Earth. Covering 70% of the world, water sustains the plants we eat and hydrates our bodies. But what if there was no water? Bibles, the Holy Word of God. God's written gift is His prime method of communicating the gift of grace to His children. Sadly, there remains two-thirds of the planet, over four billion people, who have never even held that message in their hands. Since 2007, Remnant Publications has been reaching the people of Africa with the Word of God. These are precious souls who have never had the opportunity to read the life-changing message of the Gospel for themselves. Hundreds of thousands of Bibles have already been donated and printed, loaded into containers, and shipped to the continent of Africa, making it into the hands of spiritually starving Christians eager to know more about the love of God. As the word has spread about the Bibles for Africa project, requests started coming in from all over the world, even unreached countries like Cuba. God seemed to be opening doors bigger than the staff at Remnant had envisioned. Following God's lead, Remnant has expanded the reach of the Bibles to cover the entire globe, making this a true worldwide project. Imagine we can take your good unused Bibles and put them in the hands of an individual that really needs it. Or for just only $3, we can take a brand new Bible like this and get it sent to anyone that's hungering and thirsting for the Word of God. And not just in Africa, but anywhere in the world that it's needed. But as you've seen, the need is so overwhelming. We urgently need your help to reach the world with Bibles. Will you commit today to helping us in this exciting effort to share the gospel with the world? Will you help us introduce Jesus to these precious souls? To get involved and learn more about the Your Bible Saves Project, call us now at 1-800-423-1319 or visit us on our website at www.yourbiblesaves.com. America Magazine wrote, The sight of the British political establishment, including a row of former prime ministers, waiting patiently for the successor of St. Peter to address them from